Councillor Perks. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, on page 19, you have a number of uh, lettered clauses. I'd like to turn your attention to clause I. City Council direct that all vehicle for hire drivers can be registered to work for one brokerage or communication platform at a time. Does that mean one and only one? That's what it says. Okay, so if I'm, uh, for example, there are drivers here who uh, drive for Beck and they currently use the legal Uber application, they can no longer do that. Is that correct? Well, it, it says city directs, directs that, and I think that's arising out of a concern that okay. the brokerage has had, that uh, there were people that were supposedly available to them that weren't available to no, them. No, I understand that that helps the brokerages. Um, on uh, the attachment you have, attachment number two, a vehicle for hire driver, that's a taxi driver, pays an upfront license fee of $130, and if I'm looking at the bottom, second from the bottom, Someone who's driving for Uber or a different PTC pays an upfront cost of fifteen dollars. Yes. Am I correct? Yes. I, okay. Thank you. Um, I, 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 I'm allowed to answer. I think. Yeah, Cook, you did. Yeah, Miss Cook. Went so if the next question no, no, I have I'm is sorry. on page. I am three. sorry. No, you don't get to decide when my answer is finished. Oh, I'm sorry. You have more to say. I didn't yes, understand. Just to say that that math that at the fifteen dollars per driver plus the corp, I'll call it the corporate fee. Yeah. Uh, Miss Cook went through all of that math and that the net effect of that is to impose in total, based on the number of drivers and so on, about $5 million in fees on an Uber type company, that company of that size, uh, so that, uh, and, and. I was just trying to understand the cost of entries to different categories of drivers, and now I do. On page three, um, you, uh, now this one's interesting. My, my understanding from an earlier answer is, uh, you're saying that we're going to eliminate the training program uh, requirement for Uber or somebody like that, and it's voluntary. They can train people if they wish, um, and you, you think they'll do better. What I'm concerned about okay, with uh, here Councilor is Perks, on recommendation 51. Perks, hold yes, on, I'm just put your time on hold. Okay, uh, please. It is very noisy in here. I can't hear, and and this is to the staff as well behind the mayor. Please. Be respectful. It's hard to hear when the question is being asked and answered. Okay, thank you. Council thank you very Burks. much, Speaker. That's quite helpful. On page three, I'm looking at recommendation 51. Council delete the requirement for limousine owners and driver to complete the initial and refresher training uh, as a condition of licensing effectively immediately. And 52, Council delete the requirement for limousine owners and drivers to complete CPR training and obtain first aid certification as a condition of licensing effectively immediately. So given that uh, these limousine companies don't have the customer feedback thing that uh, Uber says is the tool by which they use to guarantee high quality drivers, why are you deleting these requirements for limousine owners? I, well, first of all, I think it's a staff recommendation. I want to just make well, sure it's Mr. Mayor, you, you are moving I'm it. I'm sorry. Again, I, I, I have to. I, I'm happy. You can make your questions as long as you want. It's your time. Mm -hmm. But you just let me answer without interrupting, Certainly. please. That, that what they're trying to do here is produce consistency between all three or more elements of the ground transportation, limo, taxis, and, uh, and uh, uh, PTC cars. So it's consistency, and it's a staff recommendation. Okay, thank you. Um, on page 19, part K... Oh, sorry, before I do that, I just want to make sure I understand by uh, accepting the committee recommendations that a person can own multiple plates and that uh, plate owners can incorporate. That, that's something that you're moving, right? That's you're supporting. On page 19 further, along the same vein, uh, number K, council permit taxi brokers as part of their taxi broker's license to manage taxi cab license to be able to rent it or lease it to a licensed driver on behalf of the owner. So, so if I understand this, we're going to a system where numbered companies can own a, a series of taxi plates and the garage can, uh, on behalf of the owner, uh, license it out and the owner doesn't have to be a party of that license. Is that what I understand K to do? It says here that uh, a taxi broker 
uh, can allow the management of a taxi license and rent or lease it to a licensed driver on behalf of the owner. And it makes mention, as you suggested, of the fact that it could be done. Uh, it, it says here that the broker can designate the individual uh, who is a signing officer of the corporation. It makes no mention of a numbered company. But one, but the numbered company is referred to elsewhere. So I just want to understand if in your motion and what you're doing, it now becomes possible for someone to own a whole bunch of plates through a, a numbered company, not actually have any day-to-day uh, -day management of it, and just allow the broker to lease it out on their behalf. That's the effect of what you've done? That's, I think that is the effect, yes, of this motion. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Layton. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and to you, Mr. Mayor. Please take a breath. It's, I know that you've been up standing for about an hour, so I, I'll, I'll, I will ask a long question at first, and then that may give you some time. On, on page 14, item number 94 has a, a recommendation that's not one of the staff recommendations, and that's that we eliminate the application fee for standard taxi, ca taxi cab owner plates. Now, on page page 20, uh, under M and, and the, uh, the, the letter B, we're also investigating the feasibility of a transition fund for taxi cab plane owners who invest, investments have been negatively impacted by new market entrants. Now it seems to me like we're, we're, we're giving away a thousand new plates or thereabouts and not charging anything for them, but at the same time trying to raise some money to pay back plate owners that may have lost out because of the new set of regulations here and changes to the taxi cab industry. Um, where do you suppose the additional money both for the, the new plates uh, that are being issued and this, uh, this transition fund be procured? Well, first of all, let's look at, again, the overall objective here, which is to try and help the taxi cab industry to stabilize itself. And that's to the benefit of all the participants in it, everybody, including drivers, because in the end, it's all a related family of people who are uh, performing various uh, functions and playing various roles. Uh, secondly, um, I will say to you, in all honesty, that I'm, I don't want to prejudge this report. It'll be written by staff, not by me, but I'm skeptical about, about what we would be doing by way of this transition fund, but I think it's a fair request to look at it and determine the feasibility of it. And thirdly, I would have said that I think the contemplation of many who have discussed this concept see it as being something that would be uh, self-financed. In other words, you'd find a way similar to what is proposed with respect to accessibility to look at a way to collect the money, you know, over time to help transition these people and cushion the blow of what has been a jarring transition in the industry. But I'm, I'm skeptical of that. Uh, with respect to the thousand plates, um, I think if it is in the cause of stabilizing this industry but also increasing supply, which I heard other people earlier on speaking in favor of, I would have said that's a good thing to do. I, I, I would argue, and though. And the amount of money is not that significant, relatively ba speaking. Ba based on your expertise in, 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 in business, I would argue that giving away, uh, adding plates to the mix and then studying what the impact of adding all these additional cars on the road or vehicles for hire on the road may in fact be, re one may be reinforcing the other. Um, but on page 19, can, can we put our, 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 our I'd like to put our shoes, uh, us in the driver's suit, shoes for a moment and just talk through what it looks like based, uh, what it looks like to drive a cab based on recommendation I, as well as this notion of the absentee, uh, uh, absentee plate holders and this idea of, uh, of individual brokerages um, conducting their own training. So if I'm a dr shift driver, I, I, want, I used to go and get trained by the city and then go and work for brokerages and, 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 and lease a plate. Now I would have to go do a training at one brokerage and because of, because of point I, I would only be able to work for one at a time. Now, if I didn't like the terms of my daily, monthly, or weekly lease, which is also one of your recommendations, I would have to go to another brokerage, do another set of training, and then I wouldn't be able to work for both at the same time. Is that your understanding of how this well, would work? Well, I, I don't have any understanding of how the training piece would work, but I do have an understanding of the point of principle, which is that you can't be working for two at once. 
And I don't think it's really any different, even though these people are not employees, uh, that you couldn't have an arrangement that you could rely on, where you could assume you're going to have staff that you pay in your office, but they're able to work for three other councillors at the same time, and you're never sure when they're going to show up and be available to accept a fare. And I think the, the, the assistance that's trying to be provided by this is simply to allow the brokerages, who are people that, um, that the traveling public rely on by phone or by, uh, by app now, some of them have apps, um, need to know that the people they think are working for them at a given point in time are working for them and available to take a fare as opposed to it being X minus 25 percent who are working for somebody else. And so, to, so to me, this as a businessman, this is a reasonable uh, kind of provision to put in place to say, look, you know, you can go work for Uber anytime you want um, or you can work for a brokerage anytime you want, but to work for both is not going to allow either one. Uh, to know that you're working for them. Mr. Mayor, this may seem like a very good deal on the part of the businesses and the large corporations, but it's certainly not a good deal for the drivers themselves. Given the fact that they can only work for one at a time and each of them have to provide their own training mechanisms because they can't rely on the city anymore, what we're going to find is that the drivers, and I'll put this in the form of a question, don't you think that the drivers are put in a place where they're forced to work for a, one broker or another or else fear of starting back at zero and going to have to work for another, uh, another brokerage firm? If that, that was your last question. Well, I can only repeat what I said a moment ago, which is that I think um, I, that, that you know, drivers would still have the opportunity when they were not uh, you know, to, to be uh, working uh, for Uber, for example. But what they're saying here is you can't say you're available to a broker and on the road for that broker and available to take calls from the broker when, in fact, you're not. Um, so, I, I mean, to me, it's just, I, I, you know, it, 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 it is, um, it, it, I don't think it's, as I said earlier, it's a reasonable requirement to say that you're either with us uh, on a shift, working for a brokerage and taking calls, or you're not. Thank you. So, a few questions, and I'll, I'll keep them brief. Uh, first of all, as it relates to safety, just, I want to understand, for PTCs and taxis, it is not required to have training. It's optional. Is that correct? It's, it's optional in terms of a city mandated yeah. requirement so under is, this proposal. Yeah, so it is not required, it is optional. And number 51 in here states that we will eliminate the requirement for training for limousine owners. So I heard you say in response to another question that that's so that there's consistency across all three, taxis, PTCs, and limos. So that consistency is the following. It's not required, it's optional, correct? Yes. Okay. As it relates to a couple other measures for PTCs and taxis, are cameras required? Cameras, again, what we did do in response to the public concern expressed by people yep. in the taxi industry was to include in this uh, documentation uh, a study uh, of, of the uh, possible uh, uh, use of cameras in uh, PTC cars. Um, I heard Ms. Cook, as you did earlier on today, explaining, I think very well, that there's quite a substantial difference in the reasoning that would lie behind having cameras in one and perhaps not in another. But again, we should look at it. And Councillor Perks was asking a lot of, I think, valid questions about people being injured or not, and that's part of what you would look at. But in this case, again, cab fares, I think somebody used the word, are anonymous. Uh, yeah. People that you can be hailing on the street, Uber and type <laughs> ride-sharing fares are people that are booked. You okay. see their name and phone number and so but, forth and so but on. But specifically on cameras, there will be a study that will take place, but they are not required when this comes into effect. That is right. Okay. Are flashing lights required? I can't, I honestly can't answer that question. Okay, I'm, I'm up, from my reading of it, I understand that they are not, but I, I, I you know, I'm not, I'll ask staff, I'll follow up. On, on the issue related to plate, so if I understand this correctly, whether you are a TTL or an ambassador, everyone, if this, come, if this passes, everyone becomes a plate owner, is that right? If you are a TTL or an ambassador right now, everybody becomes a plate owner if this passes. Well, they already are. Well. But there is no requirement to drive the vehicle yourself if this comes into effect. So everyone becomes a plate owner without the requirement to drive. Is that right? I think you're right, yes. Okay. That's my understanding. And Sorry to give, uh, you know, we're dealing with a 500-page bylaw and you're asking me questions that I believe that is the effect of this, yes. And, and so again, the purpose of that okay. is to give a degree of a greater flexibility to the people in this industry that is suffering so that it can compete better. So, so uh, on, everyone Carl, becomes Carl, a plate. Carl, sorry. Councillor Christie. Yes. Speaker. I put your time on hold. Um, it's getting very noisy again. I, I don't want to keep repeating myself. Please, try to keep it down. 
Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you, Speaker. So, so in effect, if you're a TTL or an ambassador, you become a plate owner without the requirement to drive. So, if I understand number 19 point K, brokers will also be allowed to manage these plates, is that right? That's the provision I was being asked about yeah. earlier on where you can, in fact, uh, lease it to a, uh, to yes. a licensed driver, yes. Is there a cap proposed on the number of plates an owner can have in here? I don't believe so. So an owner, there's, an owner can own as many plates as they want? Yes. So in, a, 